Hal, it's a, such a pleasure to have you here. Thank We're you. so excited to have you speaking uh, at the symposium. Can you tell us a little bit about your work just to set a context for our audience? Absolutely. Uh, in thinking about uh, taking care of our patients with epilepsy, one of the most important problems is uh, the effects on cognition, and specifically when uh, many cognitive systems are affected together in our patients, they have uh, overall impairment, which we refer to as impaired consciousness. Um, impaired consciousness is, uh, has become a little bit controversial in terms of terminology in epilepsy, but I think we all know what we mean by that when our patients, unfortunately, uh, have difficulties uh, operating a motor vehicle or functioning at work and school. So this is an important clinical problem, and understanding the brain networks that are involved in this process can hopefully uh, get us to a better place where we can prevent this very, very important problem for our patients. Let me ask you a, a question on that. Uh, what is the importance of looking at the concept of networks as it pertains to epilepsy? It makes sense to me, but, right. but I just kind of give us a sense of just laying down that foundation of its importance. Yeah. Networks are, of course, critical in all brain functions, and they, they span from the level of uh, uh, neuronal circuits all the way up to the level of uh, um, long-range uh, brain interactions from, from uh, wide brain uh, um, anatomical areas. When it comes to impaired consciousness and epilepsy, all those uh, systems are, are critical. And we found that the uh, main types of seizures that cause impaired consciousness, namely absent seizures and uh, generalized tonic-clonic seizures, as well as focal seizures like temporal lobe seizures, when they cause impaired consciousness, engage specific brain networks uh, in abnormal activity that disrupt their uh, normal functioning uh, and produce impaired consciousness. So we've been using approaches like brain imaging and electrical recordings both in uh, human patients as well as in experimental animal models to really try to understand um, critically what happens in these networks during epileptic seizures to cause disruption in their widespread network function and leading to uh, impaired information processing and impaired consciousness. How, g give us a sense of the challenges that you face in, in kind of exploring this larger concept as you use these different tools to look at epilepsy networks. Can you give us a kind of just a sense of those challenges? Absolutely. So uh, to try to understand these networks requires a lot of uh, powerful tools. Um, We've used functional neuroimaging, um, we've used electrical recordings and behavioral testing, uh, taken together uh, both in, in patients with epilepsy as well as in these experimental animal models. And just to, to hit a few highlights, if you look, for example, at absent seizures, uh, which are these brief staring spells that children have, we discovered that uh, a lot of the networks that are involved in normal brain activity, uh, a network, a famous network referred to as the default mode network, Another network that's critical for task performance referred to as the task positive network. And a third network, which is uh, normal sensory motor, uh, cortical, and thalamic networks. Those three networks sequentially get involved during absent seizures if you look at fMRI signals. And it takes a lot of seizures and a lot of years of work to, to sort of appreciate this pattern. But you can see these networks sequentially engaged. And when those networks are more intensely involved, that causes impaired consciousness. You can actually have absent seizures that spare consciousness when you have milder involvement of those three networks. Um, with generalized tonic-clonic or grand mal seizures, there's also uh, specific network involvement of the higher order frontal and parietal association uh, cortex you can see on spect brain imaging. And the exciting thing is that um, the cognitive deficits that you see after the seizures are over seem to be related to uh, an, an area of the brain that has been relatively neglected, that's the cerebellum. Okay. When the cerebellum uh, gets turned on uh, towards the end of seizures, that seems to shut off the frontal parietal cortex. And again, this is another example of a long-range network that's critical for some of the cognitive deficits leading to impaired consciousness and epilepsy. And finally, uh, I think in some ways most intriguing, focal seizures of the temporal lobe which have uh, long been known to be uh, a common cause of impaired consciousness and, mm -hmm. and uh, a very, very uh, severe problems in patients with epilepsy. It's been a mystery. Why should a focal localized seizure cause something that we usually think of as being a global uh, uh, property, that's consciousness? Why should a focal seizure right. cause impaired consciousness? Well, it turns out that focal seizures in the temporal lobe actually shut off uh, the sort of uh, power circuit deep in the brain uh, the arousal circuits in the brainstem that give rise to uh, normal consciousness. So from both human studies and animal models, we found 
that there's this critical switch deep in the brain that gets tripped by temporal lobe seizures. And most excitingly, we think we can move this now into the treatment domain because wow. in some of our rat models, at least, we haven't done this yet in people, we can switch that uh, switch back on again. So you can have a rat during a focal seizure in the hippocampus, which uh, stops behaving because it gets switched into a sleep-like mode and the cortex goes to sleep but then you can switch it back on again by stimulating the arousal circuits deep in the brain. So, so those are some of the challenges we sure. face. We hope to, uh, by understanding these circuits, improve the function of our patients, prevent impaired consciousness, uh, get people back into sort of a normal kind of pattern of life, and hopefully be able to resume driving and functioning uh, at work and at school.